EOS Dry approached the PIF and said, I need a virtual training capability for our striker brigade combat teams for basic training. And, it, and we don't train the vehicle, we train the shoot, move, and communicate for the crew members and the dismounted infantry. We went out and talked to the Combined Arms Center and the National Simulation Center at Fort Leavenworth and kind of collaborated with them in the Army Game Studio. And we brought PEO Stry a synthetic, uh, an, a virtual training capability for the striker brigade combat teams where none existed before. It's low fidelity, mm -hmm. but it's also very low cost. Yeah. The cost to acquire and the cost to sustain this is in the noise compared to some of the other legacy systems. So, so I shouldn't say none existed, but something just like this did not exist. Readiness, lethality, and survivability. That's what this asset keys in on. This was really only supposed to live in the field for two years until STI, uh, synthetic training environment, the larger STI came to life. And of course, we're six years down the road now. Now we've been asked if we can maybe make it live till 2026. So we're going to take something that had a life uh, expectancy and a, and, a, and a requirement for two years and probably going to extend it to 10. Really what this is, is a really cool uh, stage set of props to play a video game on. I mean, this is VBS-3, uh, Virtual Battle Space 3. We've got a gunner station and a, a vehicle commander station, driver station, two air guard stations, and then dismount stations. And, and they, just, they, they pretty much play, play the video game. And it's, once again, it's a shoot, move, communicate type of thing with all the different striker missions, whether it be, you know, medevac or Kazavac, an infantry mission or a scout mission or a mortar mission. Uh, they, they've got different scenarios within BBS3. And that, you know, that, that's a commercial off-sale product, but Army Game Studios modifies that uh, for, for the intended audience. A lot of us are prior service. The ones that are, we kind of just look at our civilian career as an extension of our active duty service. I think we're all just very keen and very committed to equipping our combined forces with that which they need to train, fight, and survive.